if we have an AC source and this is our galvanometer in order for this galvanometer to function as a voltmeter we must add a multiplier resistance so that the galvanometer will not significantly introduce a voltage drop to our test component like the AC source now since they belong to one loop or one connection this is basically the same if we position the multiplier resistor after the galvanometer and this is also the same because the current that the AC source produces fluctuate over time or it changes direction or it oscillates back and forth so basically these two circuits are equivalent now let me rewrite the voltage signal that our AC source produces if the y-axis represents the voltage signal coming from the AC source, the x-axis refers to time. So basically, the voltage signal behaves like a sine function. So the highest peak of this voltage signal is called peak voltage represented by V sub P. And the same goes for the lowest level of this voltage signal, which is just the same magnitude with V sub P but with a negative sign. Now, I want to redesign my circuit or voltmeter in such a way if y-axis is the voltage level and the x-axis is the time. Now, during the first half cycle, the galvanometer will detect this portion and instead of truncating this second half cycle, I'd like to record it as well. This is the first half cycle and this is the signal after a full cycle when the ac source executes its second full cycle then i want my circuit to record again the first tick and the second tick in other words i don't like to discard the second half cycle for each one whole period of the ac source so in order to do this i will be using the bridge type configuration so first, I have an AC source, and this is my galvanometer. My galvanometer must have a multiplier resistor. Now, let me focus on the first half cycle of the voltage coming from the AC source. So during the first half cycle, I want all the current to pass through our galvanometer. So during the first half cycle, the direction of the current flows this way. Now during the next cycle or the second half cycle, if this is our AC source, the current flows this way. So during the second half cycle, I don't want such current to go to waste, so I'll also connect it. here so during the second half cycle if the current flows this way it will be blocked by this diode but the current flowing on the opposite direction will be recorded by the galvanometer now we need to connect the AC source and the galvanometer to a common ground and let's just assume that they share a common ground so what will happen is I'll try to reconnect this galvanometer back to the AC source but before doing that during the first half cycle the current flows this way if I connect this back to the AC source and during the first half cycle I don't want the current to flow this way so I'll block it with a diode next when during the second half cycle recall that the current flows this way so during this time if i connect the end of the galvanometer here i don't want the current to flow this way and affect this end so essentially i want to block again this current during the second half cycle so i'm going to use a diode to restrict the current flow here so that's it this is our bridge type full wave rectifier for an ac voltmeter design so during the first half cycle the current can readily flow to the galvanometer using this path and then during the next or the second half cycle the current can readily flow through this path to the galvanometer
Now, recall our equation for half-wave rectifier circuit for the average voltage that the galvanometer detects. Now, this equation here is based on the assumption that when we have a voltage signal coming from the AC source, the only voltage signal that reaches the galvanometer is the first half cycle. And the second half cycle is actually truncated or blocked by the diode. And that's where we get this equation. But since the other missing half is already included in this full wave rectifier circuit, then we just have to multiply this term with 2 to represent these two voltage signals. Since we allow both first half cycle and the second half cycle to pass through the galvanometer in our circuit, in this circuit, the average value will be twice as this value. So I'll have v average equals 2 times this expression. And recall that the relationship between root mean squared voltage and the peak voltage is this one. V VRMS equals VP over square root of 2. If I'll try to plug this equation here, I'll end up with this. V average equals 2 times square root of 2 VRMS over pi. Therefore, the average voltage read by the galvanometer is 0 0.90 VRMS. Using the same reasoning as that of the half-wave rectifier, we have the following sensitivity. As an example, calculate the multiplier resistance so that the galvanometer with full-scale deflection current of 1 milliamp and meter resistance of 1000 ohms can read an AC source with root mean square voltage of 10 volts. Let me rewrite the equation for the multiplier resistance in terms of sensitivity. Since we have an AC source, this is the sensitivity for our AC circuit times the range of voltage that this circuit can handle minus the internal resistance of the meter. Apparently this range refers to the input voltage and since our AC voltage is represented by root mean squared voltage then this is actually the root mean square voltage. For the sensitivity, recall that from our previous derivation, the sensitivity of our AC circuit voltmeter is equal to 0.9 times the sensitivity of a DC voltmeter. And this is equal to 0.9 times, since the sensitivity of DC voltmeter is just 1 over the full scale deflection current, then this is equal to 0.9 times 1 over 1 milliamp. R sub S is equal to, I'll just directly plug this back to the above equation. So I'll have 0 0.9, 1 over 1 milliamp times the range which is the VRMS and based on the given it is equal to 10 volts minus the meter resistance which is 1k ohm. I'm plugging in the values. This results to R sub S equal to 8000 ohms. For your lab experiment, you will be implementing a basic half-wave AC voltmeter circuit and a basic full-wave AC voltmeter circuit. For each circuit, you'll be able to compute for a value of the multiplier resistance. And also, after implementing the circuit, you can connect an oscilloscope across R sub S to observe the waveforms. And finally, since you will be using potentiometers for R sub S, you can separate the R sub S resistors from the circuit and measure its resistance. So essentially, you will have a computed 
multiplier resistance and you will also have a measured multiplier resistance. So you compare the two and also analyze the waveforms that these two circuits create. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!